In this video, we're going to create a custom layout for our blog. Hi, my name is Stratos and I'm constantly producing video tutorials about WordPress. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. In the previous video, we created a custom template for the single blog page. And in this video, we're going to do the same for the archive page. We're going to use the single loop item template override feature that it is in the pro version of Cadence theme. So in order to follow along, you have to be owner of the Cadence theme pro. Also, you will have to own a pro feature for the dynamic content. And in my case, I'm going to use the Cadence Blocks Pro. But if you own the stackable, you can follow along with that or any other plugin that can handle dynamic features inside the Gutenberg. Let's go back into the dashboard and let's go for the posts and categories. And here we're going to see the categories that I have. I'm going to view the food category and this is how the default style of the Cadence theme is. So you can change some things in the customizer, but you cannot change everything inside every item. You can hide some things, you can show some other things, but you cannot style everything. And we're going to do that by creating a custom template. Keep in mind that inside the template, we're going to change this single item, not the whole style of the page, just the single item. And you're going to see later on what I'm talking about. Let's go inside the categories and here let's go to the appearance and elements. And here we're going to click add new for the template and we're going to create a new template. Let's click template and for the add title I'm going for archive and post. And since I'm going only to style one category, I'm going to name it food. Okay, now let's go into the settings. And here, as it says, we have the preview settings. And here you can change what element you want to preview. Remember that it can only show one item. And you can select the preview post and select what post you want for that to preview. I don't really care about that at this moment, so I'm going to click choose. And here I'm going to click the placement and I'm going to select replace archive loop item content. And as it says, it will only replace the one item inside the loop. This is the priority and something. if something is not working correctly, then you will go and put here a higher number and hopefully it will fix the problem and grab this template instead of the other. Okay, after that we need to go into the display settings and here I'm going to click to the none and I'm going to select that uh, the category archive. After that we have the select category archive by and I'm going to select individual and here I'm going to select food. Of course you can add more categories in order to style more categories here or you can create more templates and one for each category and give more unique style to your website. I'm going to hit publish now and publish again and now if I go here and refresh I will get a blank page which means that it's getting already the template that I'm creating. Okay. I'm going to create first a row layout and I'm going to start by creating something with two columns. So what I'm going to create is put the featured image in the left and the content that I want in the right. But I'm going to uh, show you three different ways to create the featured image in the left. So the first one will be something like we did in the previous video. We did a background for the featured image and we're going to do the same by clicking here and clicking into the section and then into this gear icon and then into the container settings and then clicking here into the dynamic icon, enable that and then select that to be featured image URL. So this way we'll have the featured image but we don't have any height. If I save here and go into the front end and refresh, I will not see anything inside here because I don't have any height for these columns. So I need to also click inside the column and I need to go into the padding and margin and for the padding I'm going for 150 on top and 150 on bottom. Now on bottom. Now if I click update and refresh here, I can see that I have those images here. Now I'm going also to add uh, a title inside here and I'm going to continue with the image later on and you will see why in the few next steps. Let's go and put that in the middle for the next column and I'm going to click here and add the heading element advanced heading and here I'm going to uh, select of course the dynamic content and here I'm going to add the post title and add the dynamic content inside. Okay let's update that and see now how it looks in the front end. 
And as you can see, this is how it looks. Now, in order to do that as one column, I have to go inside the customizer. The template, as I've said before, it's handling the one item and not the whole page. So you need to go into the customizer and you need to change the layout of the page into something different. And we're going to do that by getting inside the customizer, going into the uh, block layouts and not the page. So block post and then archive layout. And here I'm going to hide the food here. I don't want that. And I'm going to change that uh, from three columns to one. Once you do that, you can publish the page. And now let's go back and refresh the page. And this is how it looks. If you are okay with that layout, you can continue to the next step and add some more content inside here. But let's see what else we can do and what are the pros and cons with this method. So if you're using the method with a the background, then the whole image is not displayed inside here. This is just a background of the size that you have put there. So it's good if you have different images for the featured image and that images have different sizes. But if you are following one rule with the featured image and you always keep the same dimension for every featured image uh, that you have inside your blog pages, then you should create something different in order to put the whole image because if we go into the uh, container style settings you will see that this is not the whole image we have also something from here the strawberry is cut so it's not the whole image as I've said okay next thing let's remove that click here let click disable that and let's remove also the padding that we put here so let's go and put here zero and zero for the bottom and let's click the plus icon and let's go into the uh, browse all and then post featured image if you don't have it here you will go down into the theme and then post featured image once you do that it will grab the whole image and let's update that and refresh here and as you can see this is the whole image now as you saw it reduce a little bit the image height and this is because it wants to show the full width so if I go now and see the image it's bigger yeah, you can see the whole the full strawberry here and you can see also the full ball around here what was exactly the image uh, in the beginning now this element is okay but it doesn't have any control instead uh, it only have one for the link settings and you can link that to the post so whenever a visitor clicks into the icon he will get straight ahead into the single post element and okay you can use that element if you want and it's perfectly fine but if you want more control uh, more control about the image that you are adding then you have to do something different let's remove the block also and let's go here click the plus icon and select the info box so the info box is the element that we have closer to the single image. Of course, we have some title and text here, but we're going to remove those. And we're going to start by uh, going into the container settings. And here we have to go for the background and select that to be white. And then the border white also. The hover, because it has some hover, as you can see, let's put that on white also and then white for the border. OK, after that, we have some container padding and we're going to put that as zero. Then we're going into the media settings and we're going to change the media type into image. After that, we're going to click here and select the enable dynamic image and select here the post featured image. After that, we're going down into the media padding and here we're going to put zero and for the media margin, we're going zero and zero. Okay, and I think we're good to go. Let's update that and let's go and refresh now the page here. And now, as you can see, we have here the settings that I want. Now, I haven't uh, disabled the title and the text, so let's do that as well. Let's go into the title and let's go and uh, do not show the title and let's go for the text and do not show the text. Let's go and update that and see now in the front end that we only have the image. OK, it didn't save that. Let's update that and hopefully now we will only have the image. OK, so we do have that. And now if we want to add a, a link as well, we can do that by going into the link options. I think it's in the container. Yeah, here. So we can click here and enable dynamic link. And here we can uh, select the post URL. So it will link the image with the actual post. If you use this element instead of the post featured image, then you have more control over the 
image inside here so you can align that in the middle in the left it's a small if it's a smaller give it a little bit of padding and margin with background separate for the image you have more control over that so you can use whatever method suits you better so let's go now for the title and for this one I used the advanced heading and I switched to the post title now you can also use here the single post element so if I go and browse all I will have here in the theme here the post title and as you can see these are looking the same but if I click here you will see that I don't have so much control I have here the font size which can be the settings from here or the custom and I have some line height and some color and also I can link that to the title but I don't have the control that I have in the advanced heading and this is why I use the advanced heading because I want more control over the element so if you want also to link that to the post you can do that by going into the link settings and clicking here and selecting the enable dynamic link and select that post URL and this will be exactly the same and link that to the post as well after that I'm going to click the plus icon and I'm going to add here the expert so let's browse all and let's go straight down into the theme and select the post expert this is the one that I want so I added the post expert as it says here so link on a new line I'm going to disable that let's update that and let's see how it looks in the front end okay and now I'm going also to add a button so let's add a button we have the advanced button here and I'm going to add the text read more okay and I'm going to link that into the links and dynamic and of course I'm going to select the post URL okay let's uh, put the button in the left and I know that I have to put a little bit of margin inside those elements so let's see how it looks in the front end and this is how it looks at this moment let's go and give it a little bit of uh, white background so let's go into the row and let's select the background settings to be white okay let's save that and see now how it looks in the front end and I need to remove the padding inside here so let's go into the padding and let's go here and put here for the top to be zero left right sorry zero bottom zero and left zero okay let's update that and also as I have here 33.37 I'm going for 4060 so let's do that and 4060 okay update and refresh here and I think that this is way better than what we had before okay I need a little bit of margin inside here as I said so let's go to the advanced heading and let's go into the spacing settings and let's go for the margin bottom and 40 okay after that inside here and here I'm going to go uh, into the margin and as you can see I don't have any control right now so what I'm going to do is remove that again okay and I'm going to add here a heading advanced heading I'm going to put that in the middle and select that to be h5 maybe something like that and select the dynamic content and here I'm going to select that to be the post expert okay add that and now I have the same text but I have also some more control over it so let's go for spacing settings and let's go and keep it a margin of 40 and update that and let's refresh here of course in the version of WordPress 5.9 they will bring us more control over those elements hopefully they will add inside the default image element a dynamic or something to control it and we're going to see how it's lo looking when it comes to that time so uh, I think I need to put something like a meta information inside here something like the post date to make it a little bit better and let's do that as well so let's put here something like an advanced heading and let's go and put an h6 okay let's add the dynamic and let's add the post date insert and then I'm going to put before I think and I cannot do that before but I'm going to write it post date okay I'm going to grab that and Control X post date 
and then I'm going to paste it here. Okay, and now let's click here and select that to be the size a little bit less. So let's go for 15 and I think it's okay. Now let's go again to the title and I think I'm going to remove the spacing and let's go for 10 and let's go to this one which is the post expert and let's go to the spacing settings and put here a margin of 40. Okay, let's update that and see now how it looks in the front end. As you can see, we have also some shadow inside here and this is not part of the template that we are building. This is straight into the customizer. So if you want to remove the shadow from here or if you want to remove the background or change the space between those two items, you have to do that in the customizer. The only thing that we're changing inside here is the item itself. So this is what we're building in the template, but everything else is pulled from the theme and you can change that from the customizer. Now, I'm sure that in version 6 of WordPress, we will have also some elements to create the whole page and start from the beginning, but at this moment, we cannot. So that was how we create a template for the archive page. And of course, if we go and see the other uh, categories, let's go here and let's go and open that. And let's go to the categories, post categories. We will see that all the other categories don't have that template and they have the template for the default cadence uh, theme. They have the default template from there. So you can create as many templates as you want and customize your website and give a unique layout. Now, I would like to hear your thoughts, guys. What do you think about this uh, theme settings? What do you think about Cadence? I think it's going to be great. And hopefully in some next features, we will get some more control over the whole layout of the website. I'm thinking of creating some other videos with custom post types and custom fields like a listing website or used cars or books or music or something different. Yeah, add in the comments below if you would like to see something like that. Give me some ideas. What would you like to see? Tell me your thoughts about the theme or whatever you want to talk about. So thanks for watching, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.